If you're looking to build a Ryzen 9 3900X computer for video editing in Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, motion design, graphic design, photo editing, 3D modeling, and more, then you're in the right place. I have ran my 3900X build through 14 plus creator benchmarks to see if it's a good purchase for you. Let's get rocking. If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. This is where you're going to find the best tech and tools for creative professionals. If that sounds like your kind of place, consider subscribing and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. Now for this video, what can you expect? I'm going to list out the parts with the average cost you can expect. Remember, this is not the actual price. The price may differ when you go to make a purchase, but these are estimates and not exact numbers. After that, I will discuss the build quality, then ease of installation, and then we will jump into the benchmark test to see how well this 3900X performs paired with a 1660 Super from NVIDIA. If you're curious how to build this computer, I have a complete build guide for each computer I build on my channel. You can click or tap the screen over here up in the YouTube cards above. Spending $1,500 on a Ryzen build, we have the case. It is a Be Quiet Pure Base 500 DX at about $99. For the cooler, we have a Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4 at around $89. For the motherboard, we have an Asus ROG Strix X570 eGaming motherboard at around $300. For the CPU, we have a Ryzen 9 3900X with 12 cores and 24 threads at around $420. For the GPU, we have an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660 Super. For the RAM, we have 32 gigs of RAM from Kingston, the HyperX Fury at around $135. For the storage, we have a one terabyte NVMe SSD from Kingston, the KC2500 or you can pick up a one terabyte NVMe SSD from Samsung for about $150. All this comes in at around $1,508 or around $1,458, depending on which one you purchase. Now, let's not forget the power supply, a very important part. Um, you wanna make sure, in my opinion, to get a gold power supply. You can get a silver power supply, but I personally recommend a gold power supply. And in this build, we have the Be Quiet Straight Power 750. Great power supply, make sure that your computer does not short out and fry your components. Never good for that to happen. Jumping into the build quality, let's start with the case. The Be Quiet Pure Base 500DX has a mix of aluminum and plastic. It feels really nice. It has a matte finish and it is a thicker plastic material to complement the aluminum. Compared to something like the Fractal Design Meshify C, it feels so much more sturdy. In my opinion, it is worth the extra 20-ish dollars to go with a more premium case like the Pure Base 500DX. I just, I cannot be happier with the extra money spent and it's only around 20-ish dollars to get that better quality. Not only is the build quality great on the Pure Base, but it has stellar airflow. Paired with the Dark Rock Pro 4, it is able to keep the CPU cool at 48 degrees Celsius during the 4K export, which we will showcase later in the video. Regarding styling, I really like the fancier RGB lighting on the Pure Base. It is not too obnoxious, but still has a lot of personality. It provides multiple RGB settings to customize your lighting experience. Now let's talk about ports. The Pure Base has a USB-C, a USB type a and a headphone jack and a mic jack on the front panel of the case. Regarding the ease of installation, it comes with standoffs pre-installed for the motherboard and it comes with directions and all of the necessary screws. The directions provided with the Be Quiet Pure Base were clear and the case is easy to navigate. I have built inside cases that feel crowded, especially when trying to navigate uh, the wiring and get everything plugged in. This was not an issue with the Pure Base. It had plenty of room and it was very easy to navigate. A lot of people, including myself, when I first considered building my own editing rig, struggled between the idea of an AIO versus an air cooler. Having worked with both, the installation process for air coolers is much easier, and historically they are a more reliable product and last longer. However, AIOs have often claimed much better styling and also can win on better cooling depending on the exact model you select. But air coolers are usually around $60 or more cheaper, or should I say more affordable since I just don't like that word cheap. So that's an added bonus as well. The Ryzen 3900X and the Ryzen 7 3700X are both great price to performance options for a 4K video editing computer. I chose the Ryzen 3900X because I knew I would do a lot of multitasking, such as recording my videos to internal capture cards on the device, using Google Slides and multiple browser tabs, editing videos in Premiere Pro, and editing photos in Affinity Photo, and even uploading to YouTube all at possibly the same time. So more cores ensures that all of this runs smoothly. Now, they're gonna have about the same uh, clock speed, the 3700X versus the 3900X. So if you're somebody who's not gonna do a lot of multitasking, 
3700X is great. For somebody who's going to do a lot of multitasking, wants a little bit faster performance while video editing, you can get the 3900X. But it's not going to be this insane game changer, and it will save you some money. When considering a motherboard, there are people of far greater expertise than myself, but let me cover the basics to help you with your decision. Make sure that you have at least M.2 spaces, two of them, for NVMe SSDs to be installed. It makes it much easier and clearer to wire up your system, and I also want to see at least two PCIe slots because for me, personally, this allows me for a dedicated GPU and a built-in capture card for filming my videos like I'm doing right now using a software called vMix. Or you could use the extra slot to double up on your GPUs for a double the power using NVIDIA's SLI technology or AMD's Crossfire. The Strix X570 offers this feature, so you're in good hands if you choose the Strix X570. Other than that, consider if the board has PCIe 4.0 NVMe or 3.0. 4.0 will allow for faster transfer speeds and ultimately a faster computer. For instance, the Strix motherboard I'm using in this build offers this, but something like the Asus Tough X570 motherboard does not. So if you choose the Tough motherboard, you can pick the Samsung 970 Evo or Kingston KC2500, but if you choose the Strix, which is the motherboard I have, you would benefit from the Samsung 980 Pro, which has PCIe 4.0 capability, which will give you faster transfer speeds and ultimately give you a faster computer. Now, I chose the NVIDIA GTX 1660 Super because it's a solid middle-of-the-road option for 4K video editing. On my average project, I get a few drop frames if I set the indicator to run through the entire project without stopping, but I never even notice a single hiccup when I'm editing in 4K. So, you know, even with motion graphics and, you know, all the peripherals that you use to edit, it's a great GPU. You could spend a little bit extra, and by a little bit, I mean like $150 plus extra for the RTX 2060, and that's not even a little bit extra, that's actually kind of a lot extra. Um, and it will give you better performance, but I really like the, G, uh, the GTX 1660 Super because it's a great middle of the road price to performance piece. Now we'll get into more of this later in the video as we jump into the benchmarks, um, but for now, let's keep moving forward. Once again, easy to install, no extra details needed here. Now the RAM, the RAM is also very easy to install for any set you purchase. Purchase. I'm using uh, Kingston HyperX two 16 gig sticks, making up 32 gigs in this build. Uh, these are great options, and in my opinion, it is up to you for your visual preference. I think the HyperX looks pretty rad. A lot of them have cool RGB lighting. Um, you can save some money by not doing RGB lighting. Um, but for me, unfortunately, you can barely even see the cool RGB lighting behind the air cooler. That's one con to the air cooler. It's big, it's bulky. That's why I always give the award for styling to the AIO. Um, note that another big benefit of choosing an AIO over an air cooler is the ability to easily swap out and upgrade the RAM on the fly without having to pull out the air cooler and then um, upgrade the RAM to put the air cooler back in. So there's these little details that make you know purchasing an air cooler versus an AIO. I hope this has given you some perspective and helps you make an informed decision. And then also let's look at the power supply. So like I said, I recommend a gold power supply because that's what's feeding power to your system. And if it glitches or shorts out or something happens, it can fry parts in your system. So we're using the Be Quiet Straight Power 750 for this build. And last but not least for the parts run through, let's talk about the SSDs. Some of my favorite brands are personally Samsung, Sabrent, Kingston, and Western Digital. Outside of the disclaimer about PCIe 3.0 versus PCIe 4.0, um, there's a bunch of surrounding details of people who you know say, oh, you should choose this one or choose that one. Um, when considering one drive over the other, there's not a huge difference. Um, you can read some of the details about the performance and the transfer speeds, um, but I go for more reliability because transfer speeds are only going to give you a little bit of improved uh, savings time. Not a huge deal. Now, I have a three drive setup in my main editing rig, and I can actually link a video up in the YouTube cards above when it's ready, and then I'll show you why I do that three drive setup and the way to set that up so you have optimal performance inside of your video editing, such as Premiere Pro, um, to make that happen. Okay, inside my rig, I have a boot drive of Kingston KC2500 512 gig. Okay, so that's the boot drive. That's what holds all of the systems. It holds um, the operating system, the programs, yada, yada. The storage drive, I have a Samsung 970 Evo, one terabyte. Now that's where I save all my files to. So that's where I'm gonna save my video editing files to. That's where I'm gonna bring in photos and videos and all that. And then I have a cache drive. So inside of Premiere Pro, I set my cache to be saved to the final drive, which is the Samsung 970 Evo SATA 
one terabyte. So that's my drive setup. And like I said, I'll link it up in the, uh, in the YouTube cards above on how I set that up and uh, the benefits of it. And for the main event, let's dive into the performance benchmarks to see from a performance standpoint what you get with a Ryzen 9 3900X and a GTX 1660 Super. If you want a multi-core beast, then this processor is a great choice. On the Geekbench 5 single core performance, the 3900X snags a 1263. Now when considering the insane multi-core performance for the 3900X, remember that it only matters if you are in fact running multiple programs at the same time or running programs that highly benefit from multi-core processes. For me, this is a big benefit regarding my use case um, that I discussed earlier. So the multi-core score in Geekbench 5 is 11,544, which is just bonkers and completely tops the charts uh, on the test that I have run. Taking a look at Cinebench R20, you can see my build score in 87,016, which places it comfortably in the top spot by over 650 points. Now let's dive into the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark. I will use this benchmark to see how well a computer will be able to handle Adobe's design suite by testing it in the most system intensive software in the suite, which is Photoshop. The build scored an 856, a very respectable score, meaning this computer will cut through any Photoshop task like a warm knife through butter. For graphic design, this build will dominate. You will experience smooth workflows in Photoshop, InDesign Illustrator, and other graphic design programs like Sketch, Affinity Suite, and Figma. Regarding the motion design, I'm also using the Puget Systems After Effects and After Effects Render Benchmarks to test this computer. On the standard After Effects test, we can see the Ryzen 3900X picking up a 925, and for the After Effects Render Benchmark, it snagged a 527. Now let's take a look at some 3D modeling scores to see how well this build stacks up for 3D modeling. The 3900X scored an Autodesk 3DS Max score of 136.75, Autodesk Maya 204.83, PTC Creo 134.37, and SOLIDWORKS 76.06. Now for my favorite part of the benchmark test, let's head on to the main event, which is video editing. First, I'm going to start off with a playback test. For this test, I'm gonna take a nine minute 4K clip, add some motion graphics, and then play it back in the timeline at full quality. This clip contains 16,177 frames in total, with 7,240 of those frames being motion graphics. The 3900X can play back full quality 4K footage in Premiere Pro timeline with only 35 drop frames, thanks to the GTX 1660 Super. If you want a zero drop frame rate, then you can either simply switch to half playback or fourth quality uh, to set up some proxies, or you can upgrade to an RTX 2060. But keep in mind, that will add around $150 to $200 to your build. So to be honest, I can't even tell when my frames are dropped. It does not affect my editing workflow at all. But if you're somebody who's gonna be using a uh, 6K footage or you're gonna be using a ton of motion design, then maybe that upgrade would benefit you and that'd be money well spent. To render out the 7,240 motion design frames, it took the Ryzen 3900X three minutes and 39 seconds. Moving on to the 4K export test, I'm gonna take a nine minute 4K clip, place it into Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, then export both out at 1080p and 4K YouTube settings. The 3900X 4K to 4K export was three minutes and four seconds. The 3900X 4K to 1080p took two minutes and 57 seconds. And for DaVinci Resolve 4K to 4K export, four minutes and 39 seconds. DaVinci Resolve 4K to 1080p, two minutes and 23 seconds. Last night, I know how many of you want to know how are the thermals and noise during the 4K export. 3900X comes in at the lowest temps of any computer I've ever tested in my studio at 48 degrees Celsius. So it runs cool and quiet. During the 4K export, it only gets up to 42 decibels of noise. And I absolutely love it. It's super quiet in my studio. I'm actually running the computer right now. It's running at about 42 decibels as I'm doing the stream. And obviously, you can't hear it, which is awesome. So this Be Quiet case, the air cooler, and the uh, silent wings fans are incredible. And for the full thermal temps in the main applications, here are those thermal temps for each setup. And here is the component usage during some of the main benchmark tests as well. If you're curious about the exact availability or pricing of any of these products as we've headed through this video, you can head down in the description below and click those links. And if you do make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. That's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. If you wanna follow along in my full build series, you can click or tap the screen over here. Otherwise, keep editing, keep designing, keep creating. I'm Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you here in the next video.